Hello, and welcome to Real Person Reviews. I'm Sam, and I'm a real person. And today I want to talk to you about Doom 64 for the Nintendo 64. And at this point, I'm going to assume you've either, you know, read my review of the first Doom, or more likely have actually played Doom yourself, and you, you know what Doom is, you're familiar with the franchise. And there was Doom, and then there was Doom 2, and then I think everyone kind of just forgot about it because we didn't really see an actual true new Doom game, the true sequel, until like a decade later. But, um, you know, there, there was some stuff that came out um, that wasn't just, you know, kind of these like ports and remakes of, of Doom and Doom 2. Um, although it's, that's a very popular thing and I, I think uh, Doom 64 may have got kind of passed up because of that, you know. Um, the, there's a lot of stuff like, you know, uh, there was Doom, I mean, obviously it was on the, the computer at first, it was on MS-DOS, and computer players don't typically bother with console games. That's kind of been a theme that I see happen a lot. So it's not surprising that people who were big fans of Doom didn't necessarily own a console. Also, um, while there were a shitload of different ports of it, um, basically I think there's a lot of people who had the Super Nintendo version who then got a Nintendo 64 later and probably didn't want to bother getting Doom again on the Nintendo 64. Plus, I think it's it's reasonable to assume that it was going to be just a Nintendo 64 version of Doom because, um, you know, because it was ported on everything, because a lot of uh, uh, id Software games, a lot of those were being ported onto the Nintendo 64 anyway at the time. Also, there was a Duke Nukem 64, which was just a port of Duke Nukem 3D onto there, so it was pretty easy to assume that. Not to mention that there was uh, Ultimate Doom on the PlayStation, its competitor, which, again, was just a remake of Doom. It was it had, like, a bonus thing on it, but it was basically just Doom. So I'm sure a lot of people probably thought that either it was not it was not going to be superior to the original, it was not going to be superior to the PlayStation version, and it was probably just going to be a remake. Um, really, there were two games, I think, mainly that were actually new Doom games in this, this period here, where you had Final Doom, which was also put onto the PlayStation at some point. I don't remember exactly when all that was done. It's the mid-90s. Um, which was a fan thing, and like I'd like to kind of try that out as well, because that sounds cool. It's like some fans made levels that were so good that uh, it like actually used them, and then they put it in this official game and officially let them release it, and like they got money. And I don't know if the people who made this stuff got money, if it was just just it made money. But the point is, it was the thing that was still kind of official like that. Um, and for some reason, that's not considered a spinoff. However, Doom sixty four is a new game. And somehow is considered a spinoff, so it's weird. But Doom 64 is not just a remake of Doom. I mean, I played Doom back on on like for a, I don't know if we owned it and it didn't run anymore, or if we just had a free version of it, a demo or some shit back in the day. But I remember playing it and I wanted to play it again, and kind of like I did with you know Duke Nukem 3D, except that actually did get a real port. This, on the other hand, since I only had a Nintendo 64 at the time, was like, oh, I liked Doom then, I'll hit this Doom, it's probably that again, or it, it just has Doom on it. And I decided, to, you know, to get it and try it out, and it's actually a totally different game. So, um, I thought it would be worth talking about since it's one of those games that I don't hear many people talking about. Maybe hardcore Doom fans might have had it, but a lot of them didn't because of, you know, when this came out and what it, the system it came out on and everything. And really, even a lot of the Nintendo 64 fans I, I've talked to, I haven't really heard them say much about it. It doesn't mean they haven't played it. It doesn't mean that nobody played this game. Hell, it's a fucking Doom game. I'm sure plenty of people have. It's just not one you really hear come up that much. And, well, I figured I would talk about that since I really can't run Doom 3 on my computer. So this is about as close as I'm going to get. Uh, and, of course, up front here, I want you guys to know that uh, you can check out that link uh, in the description if you would like to see a written review of, of this uh, before or after, or instead of the review. Um, it's always an option, so let's just jump right into Doom 64. So I like to start with the story. I would love to start with what the story is, but I don't have the box or the manual anymore. I don't know what the fucking story is. The game doesn't really tell you much. It's a similar kind of story as the other Doom games. Is you're the last surviving dude from the the base or whatever. You're the Doom Marine guy, and uh, you're going out investing these investigating these space stations and these uh, 
spacey places, these hellish places. There's, um, I think at some point you do end up in hell again, I guess. It's, it's standard stuff for the Doom series at this point, you get the idea. Um, and, like, the game doesn't really explain much about that. I think the main plot is just that you're going in to destroy the mother demon, the one that's just spawning all of these, well, hell spawns. Um, she's the one doing the spawning, so you have to go and try to murder her. That's kind of the idea. I think there's more of an explanation for this in the thing called the Doom Bible, but I've not read that. It's not really part of the game, so... Eh, whatever. It's not real important. The point is... The importance is that you're going in and you're shooting up demons like you always do in space and in hell, and that's it's same old Doom stuff. It's nothing, nothing too new, but it works, so that's fine. Then there's also um, the gameplay, which actually is pretty much the same gameplay as well. The same mechanics as Doom and Doom 2, with the getting weapons and shooting the demon, getting those colored keys, going through colored doors and hitting colored switches, all that stuff. A few platforming things here and there with the uh, running and falling off of stuff. No looking up or down. You get the whole idea, you know. Um, it's, it's really the same kind of formula. It hasn't really changed. Um, so a lot of it actually is pretty much the same. and There's not a whole lot to say in regards to a lot of it. Um, there are some differences, though. One of the one of them is that it's all like one connected thing. It's not a bunch of different um, episodes or anything. It's all just one continuous story that goes through, or I guess, one campaign of levels. Um, and uh, it's it's just kind of nice because you don't lose all your weapons and stuff for no reason between them. Um, uh, there's, uh, the same, mostly the same weapons, uh, there's, you know, the sh super shotgun is still in this one, um, and most of the weapons have gotten a redesign, so they just, they look a little different, but they all operate generally the same. Um, one other small thing is that they've added in, uh, a kickback, so that whenever you shoot, you, um, you know, for certain guns, uh, you'll actually be knocked back a little bit because of how, uh, how much kick they have to them, like the rocket launcher or the super shotgun, um, will... Uh, edge you back a bit. Um, and there's also one new weapon in this game uh, called the Unmaker, uh, uh, unofficially or something. It, it, I think in the game it's just like, what, what the fuck is this? Uh, and like, that's the whole gun. Uh, and uh, it runs off of the same plasma stuff, you know, as your, whatever that's like the plasma rifle and the BFG. It runs off the energy cells. So um, it's kind of in that family of weaponry, I suppose. Um, also, all of the enemies have been redesigned, as well as a lot of these sprites for the, the weapons and stuff. They've all been slightly redesigned here. Um, uh, and most of the enemies try to look a bit darker and grittier for this. In fact, the whole visual representation of this game is a bit more dark and, and gritty and spooky. They try, they try to turn up that horror element for this one. I, uh, and uh, So most of the enemies have had, have had redesigns. Um, they don't have all of the enemies in here either. There, some of them are still in here, and I think the only new one really is the game's final boss. But um, all the rest of them are just you know typical ones you saw in the other games. Um, the ones that don't make it are the Revenant, uh, the Arch Vials. Uh, they they don't make it, and I think they might be the only ones that I can think of right now. As far as I can remember, and as far as I, I know, those are the only two that actually didn't make it. I don't know if the system couldn't handle it, or the mechanics, or they just didn't want them in there. I'm not sure, but I didn't see any, so I'm going to assume they don't show up. Um, them and also the gigantic spider demon does not show up. But the little dudes, the arachnotrons, they show up, so... Yeah. Uh, so that's a thing. Um, and, uh, of course, along with this, a lot of the visuals in the game are a little darker, and it's, there's more lighting effects going on. Um, there's a lot of darkness on it. Um, uh, the controls are pretty simple, but like you can also customize, like change what controls, like what you want to do what in the game for your controls a bit. So that's cool. You kind of map your own buttons. Um, and uh, there's, uh, I guess the music is, is not. There's not really music so much. It's like it's replaced the soundtrack instead of these rock and MIDI tunes are these more ambient uh, like tracks and like. It's kind of like creepy mood music for like atmosphere, and it, it's to make everything more creepy and suspenseful for it. So, um, I mean, overall, like it's trying to have a, a darker 
and uh, scarier feel to it um, throughout the entire game. Um, uh, so I think uh, that this basically are the changes. Now I want to start with the good stuff and say that I do like that, you know, it's just more Doom levels, it's a bunch of fun stuff, and you can do it on your Nintendo 64 now, so it's nice to get a new game, like, it's it's Doom with more levels, it's just more levels, um, and, like, that's cool, and, like, uh, you know, it's it's got some redesigns and stuff, so it looks all nice and updated for uh, a more current time and everything, and I think that's cool. It's nice you can map your buttons to whatever you want to map them to, and, uh, have some control over that and the options, uh, I, I think that's neat, um... And I, I, I don't know. It's it's a really good time. I mean, it's it's a fun game. It's playing off the same stuff as the other Doom games. So if you like those, you'll probably like this as well. I mean, it's still really fun. Um, it's not much to complain about there. Not much to praise that I already haven't already praised. I guess the thing is, I guess I have some problems with this game. More so in comparisons to the others, I guess um, as well. Um, I don't know. I mean. Uh, uh, and I feel bad I can't praise it more, but I've done most of my praising in the Doom and Doom 2 reviews, so just look at those for a lot of the, <laughs> the stuff I would say about this. And this, the greatness and the simplicity of the design and all that. What I will say is that, um, it's, uh, I don't really care for the darker uh, aesthetic of it. I liked it to be a little more light and more vibrant like Doom was. Um, I didn't care for the change in the soundtrack because I really like the rock and MIDI tunes as opposed to just these weird atmospheric things which fit more with that design of trying to be scary and that horror element, but I just didn't prefer it. Um, also, I mean, the enemy designs, uh, most of them I don't really like as much. Um, a lot of them end up, like, just not looking as cool to me, but maybe that's just me. Um, so, I don't know, that's, that's kind of, all those are really nitpicky things, I feel. Um, but I could see this game came out in, I don't know now, I, I think it was either 97 or 98, um, but, uh, regardless, I think, uh, you know, by this time that it came out, uh, it does feel a little more dated just because this is a game that maybe you should be able to look up and down in, um, it doesn't go as well, you know, like it's trying to stick to that same control scheme, but... Uh, you know, it does make you feel a bit dated because you can't do those things. And because you can't jump, but there's still platforming elements, that's still obnoxious. Um, there are still sometimes, maybe I just didn't find the secret way out of it, but I think there were some parts in there where you could fall into vats of, like, lava or acid or something and just have to wait to slowly die. That's annoying. Um, they didn't fix that on all those parts unless I just didn't find the stuff, you know, the exits to those parts. Um, so that was still really annoying to uh, have to deal with. Uh... And it, I don't know. It's a lot of the complaints are kind of similar to the other complaints of the other other ones as well. In that in that respect, uh, one really annoying thing I also found was that with this platforming is that there were some some parts where they wanted you to do these platforming things, and you have a sprint button still or like a speed button, I guess. Um, but in here, unlike in Doom and Doom 2, in here it's hardly fucking noticeable when you hit that sprint button. So some of those, you know, jumps are really difficult to do. Sometimes you have to, like, strafe while sprinting in order to get enough speed, because that somehow gives you more speed. I don't understand why, but it kind of does to make those jumps. And it's annoying that you should have to do that. It should have had a more noticeable boost in your speed, and it should be easier to make some of those... Not, e not even jumps, to make some of those just runs, I guess, to make some of those falls. Um, so, I don't know, that that was kind of annoying to me, that that was a thing. Um, and, uh, I think it's kind of neat that they did redo some of these levels, like, uh, some of these are just, like, uh, remakes, kind of, of ones and other, like, the other, like, Doom and Doom 2. But they also, like, have different stuff in them, so it's not like it's, like, straight up the same level over again. But I just feel a little lazy in that maybe they could have just made entirely new levels instead of borrowing a few from those other ones. Um, and uh, I guess a lot of it is just in the presentation for me where it's, you know, I, I guess I, I will say that at least they moved the shotgun into a nice spot um, so that it's your, or the super shotgun right after the shotgun. And that's probably why I feel like it should be there. But uh, I, I will praise them on that one at least that they put that in that spot. Um, but... Uh, I don't know. A lot of it does feel like, you know, it's trying to be more interesting by just having redesigned everything. And uh, the presentation I just don't think is as appealing as it was in Doom, I guess, is the overall thing. Um, 
Uh, also, another little annoying thing about it being like on a console, I guess, probably just a side effect of that, is that, um, and while I don't think it's hindered by the Nintendo 64's controller or anything, but like what I will say is I think like there's some of these spots are like really tough to do some of these, and it's like there are some things you can kind of like fail at, and they'll close off on you. Some of the secrets will definitely do that. Um, where, like, if you do it wrong, it's just you messed up and that's it. You don't get a second chance. Or, like I said, some of those parts where you fall down and, and you're stuck in, like, lava or something. And and those suck because you have to then, like, redo the entire, like, level over again on here. Because you can't just save whenever you want on the console. You can only save between the levels. But at least, at least they have a password system so that you don't necessarily even have to save onto your your, uh, your memory card. Um, if you don't have the space or you don't have a memory card, you can just write down the passwords and put those in when you want when you want to play. And I think actually it's actually pretty nice, a nice forward way of doing it because it's good for then you know, if you don't have a memory card, you can still play the game. And if you do, it's just you know easier on you whichever way you want to do it. I think it's really smart that they included both. Um, I think that's awesome. Uh, rather than trying to stick it to one or the other and having, you know, the pros and cons therein. So th I'll give them a lot of credit for that little bit. But overall, I do feel like it does have some little hindrances just on because it's on a console. Um, also, I, I, I do have to bring up that I, maybe it's just because of the way I had my cartridge in or something. I didn't have it in all the way correctly. But there were a few times when there were weird, like, texture glitches happening. And it only happened this time around. So once I took it out and put it back in, the day stopped. So it's maybe just that, but that did happen, so... I don't know, that's something I thought I should also bring up. Uh, also, all the enemies and stuff are still 2D sprites and everything, and a lot of it, I guess, just feels like maybe this should have been more advanced than it is by this point. It is more advanced, a bit more, you know... It's, it's, it has a more presentation, a, a more uh, sophisticated presentation, I guess, than Doom and Doom 2. But it doesn't have as much of the speed and the action and the and the, the energy and overall I just don't think it's as good of a representation um, a good, as good of a presentation and I don't think it's quite as I don't know I feel like it could have been it should have been more advanced for the time it came out I guess that's maybe my ultimate point on that uh, anyways I want to get to this other bit here and it's kind of a strings along pretty well I think Here's the thing, uh, if you guys don't want any spoilers, this is probably going to be sort of a bigger spoiler of the game. So, you've heard about all you need to hear at this point, uh, the game, the pros, the cons, whatever. You can jump off if you want to and avoid the spoilers, but uh, this is as much time as I'm giving you. If you don't click away, that's that's your fault. You can't blame me for this. Not, like, you know, not that a lot of people are necessarily going to play it now or that I'm going to ruin a game that's old or anything, but alright, let's get to it. Um... So, here's the thing that super pisses me off. Um, the end boss super pisses me off. To start with, you get to the end boss, and, uh, I mean, when I first played, I just kind of played through the game like normal and whatever, and then I got to the last boss, and it was like, oh man, I'm at the last boss. Cool, and, like, they start you in this room, and you get all these refills and all your health and armor and ammo and all that shit, and you're like, oh, fucking sweet. And then, uh... You, you get this, there's a thing of, like, in temporary invincibility, you're like, oh, fucking sweet. And you grab that, and you run into the room, and you go in, and you're just put into this really big room, um, and, uh, you go in, and then there are these three, like, like building things, there's this big structure in the middle, um, and the three structures on the side start spawning a shit ton of dudes. So you spend a lot of your time, and if you're not careful, maybe even a decent amount of your health and ammunition, just trying to take out this huge horde of bad guys. But yeah, that's awesome. It's really cool. And then the thing in the middle opens up, and the boss comes out. And you're like, oh, fuck, here we go. And the boss starts shooting heat-seeking missile things at you that do a fuckload of damage and are really fast, and as far as I can tell, you can't fucking dodge. I mean, I tried this multiple times, and I could not for the fucking life of me dodge those attacks to even do enough damage to kill the fucking thing, and, and I just kept dying. I was like, what the fuck? How am I supposed to do this? I waste so much ammo trying to even get to it, and, and my health and everything, my resources are drained, that invincibility is gone before I even see that fucker. And then, what the fuck do you do? And, uh, I think it's possible to beat that way, because I believe I looked it up. I believe I've seen a video, uh, of someone doing it. But, like, you have to be so precise 
in your movements and get it down so perfect. It's fucking ridiculous. I'm on the easiest setting, by the way, and it's still fucking ridiculous. So I thought that was just way too goddamn hard. And even if it's technically possible, it's not very probable that anyone is going to fucking do that. So then it gets to the whole thing about secrets, because there are secret levels and hidden levels. Now, to get to the hidden levels, you have to go, I'm just going to do this little aside now, to get to the hidden levels, you basically have to do a super secret exit in the first level of the game um, by blowing up all of the explosive barrels. When you blow up the last one, a door opens up, you have to get to that door to get to the secret exit, and you only have a short amount of time to do that, so you got to make sure you blow up a certain barrel last and then go immediately to the thing, because if you don't, you're not going to have enough time to get to it. You're going to do the entire level over again in order to do that. Fuck that. Um, then you get to a super fucking hard level. You're supposed to beat that entire level. And then if you beat that level, you get a menu to do cheats and other shit. And one of those is like a level select where you can then select these other levels for fun. I've not played them because I couldn't get through that other level, even though I did get to that crazy secret level. That super secret level. Um, and, you know, it's not worth it for what it's going to give you. It's Fuck it. I don't even know that you need to do that. So I just, I didn't bother. And if you want to see that, go do it for yourself then. Fuck. But, here's the thing, is that there are three secret levels in this game. And there's a, that Unmaker is a really good gun to have. You probably want that gun, because that does become really fucking strong, even though it starts off being pretty meh. You know, shooting one measly laser now and then. Um, thing is, you have to go to these secret levels, which there are three secret exits uh, in, in these other levels throughout the game. Um, and since they're not split up into episodes either, you don't really know when you should be expecting one and when not to. Which means you're probably, unless you get lucky and stumble upon one of them, which I think I did the first time through, um, you're going to have to look up, basically just look up where they are beforehand and keep that on hand before, so you know when, you know, what level you have to look for the secret exit in and how to do it and make sure you do it right. And make sure you pay attention to it, because in one of them, um fucking annoyingly enough is that if you do it wrong like these four switches and you have to like press them in a certain order and those four switches are at the end of the fucking level so if you get through the entire level and then try that out and you have to make sure you hit them in the very correct order because hitting one wrong switch means that all of them disappear some enemies uh pop up you kill those enemies and that's it you, you don't get a second chance unless you start the whole fucking level over again so you'd have to trial and error playing that entire fucking level so many times in order to get the goddamn order right fuck that you do that, and, like, that's fucking ridiculous. Like, they're barring off these secret levels. Like, do they need to be that difficult um, to get to these fucking secret levels? And then when you get to these secret levels, you have to go through them and find out the secret way to get these demon artifacts that are hidden in them. So, basically, you need to have the Unmaker. You need to find those three secret levels and get each of this... Find out how to get each of those artifacts in those secret levels. And then, at the end of the game, you go in and you try and use those secret artifacts, right? You use the demon artifacts and you put them into the little placements... Uh, and those spawners that spawn the shit tons of enemies so that it'll just destroy them and they won't spawn any enemies, or I guess, unless you're, you know, not fast enough, which you probably are going to be one or two of them that slip through, and you have to fight whatever slips through. Then that you can make the boss come out early when you probably still have a lot of ammo and a lot of health and everything. Um, and then you use the Unmaker because with all three demon artifacts, it makes the Unmaker super strong and shoot like three things at a time and just shoots a whole bunch of bullets out. You just kind of sit there and spam the shots at the boss until it dies. And then it's like pretty easy to do that, right? Holy shit, that's a lot of stuff to do to make the last boss fucking possible to beat. Why are these things so hidden and why do I have to do this in order to make the boss fucking feasible to defeat? Why the fuck is that a thing? That's horrible design. And then when you're done with that, you're treated with a still image, a uh, wall of text, and then you get to go through the whole cast and see all the characters from all the sprites from all the different angles and their death animations. whoop de fucking do Oh my god. It's not really worth that, you know? Just look up where those secret levels are. If you're going to play, look up where those secrets are. Go to those secret levels, get those, and make sure you do that before you try to go through the entire game. Because, honestly, there's no point in trying to get all the way to the last boss and have them be near fucking impossible and make you want to pull your dick out. Okay? Just do yourself that favor. Do yourself that kindness so you don't have to replay the entire fucking game just to try to be able to beat it like I had to do it the first fucking time I played. Or I guess the second fucking time, basically. <sighs> but Doom 64 
is still a lot of fun. I mean, even if you're not able to beat that last boss, which for a long time I, I didn't replay it, um, and I just decepted that I was never going to beat that boss <laughs> until I looked up the secret shit. Um, but uh, either way, it's still fun to go through all those levels. There's a good amount of levels. There's, you know, 25, 26 levels or something, and then there's all the secret ones and the hidden ones and all that crap if you want to do it. Um... It's pretty good. I mean, it works well on Nintendo 64. You can kind of map your buttons and stuff. And it's more Doom. If you want to have more Doom, this is nice. It's not just a remake. It's new levels. So that's cool. You should definitely check it out if you are a fan of classic first-person shooters and you have a Nintendo 64. It's one that's just it's awesome. It's it's great. And, um, I mean, I don't know. It's not much else I, should, I, I can really say about it. Well, what was your favorite Doom, I guess? You know, I mine is still the first Doom. Um, and this is probably comes in third for me after Doom 2, but still, it's it's pretty good. I mean, it's not like it's bad, it's just not, it doesn't do as much stuff as I enjoy, even though I can, I can respect the horror stuff and the darker elements and whatever. I just don't prefer that to the whole rockin' high-energy action of, of the first two, so I don't know. What do you think? Leave it in the comments, you know, and the other stuff. Whatever you want in the comments! Unfortunately, this is the last Doom game I'm probably going to be able to play unless I can magically get a device that's able to play Doom 3 or the new Doom or something. But I guess you guys will have tomorrow to check that out. You, know, you guys are going to be too busy at that point to listen to me anyway. So, you know, just I hope, if nothing else, you still have fun with the classics. And, uh, yeah, it was, it's, uh, I don't have any hell puns for this one. So... Um, it's better than Doom 63, I guess. <laughs>